Hey everybody and welcome into Clearing the Benches. Today is going to be part four of our nine part segment in which we give you the NHL's top 10 players from every decade beginning way back in the 1940s and going all the way through current time. So go ahead and hit your subscribe button. Make sure you don't miss out on any of these videos and let's get started. Well, in case you didn't see our last video about the 1960s all-decade team, I said in there that even though Bobby Orr statistically is not in the top 10, there's no way I'm having a list of the 1960s all-decade team and Bobby Orr is not going to be near the very top of that list. The same goes for the 1970s. Uh, the short time that he played during the 70s, his knees were starting to give out, but he was still very dominant. So I'm putting Bobby Orr here at the top in kind of like his own little stratosphere, because in my opinion, that's where he belongs. As far as statistically speaking, in the 1970s, this is when you started to see points explosions from individual players. Uh, guys started putting up unheard of numbers and records were falling left and right. Number one on our list, Phil Esposito, 1,087 points in 782 games during the 70s, and he won Stanley Cups in 1970 and 72 with the Boston Bruins. Guy Lafleur was the first guy to have, like, you know, longer flowing hair. When he skated really fast, it was all in the wind, and it looked really cool. Uh, he had 941 points in the 70s in 677 games, and he won five Stanley Cups with the Montreal Canadiens. As a little side note about Guy Lafleur, the California Golden Seals had the number one overall draft pick, and I believe it was in the 1970 draft. And then prior, they had made a trade with the Montreal Canadiens, in which now the Canadiens wound up with the number one overall selection. And guess who they took? Guy Lafleur. Worked out pretty well for them to the tune of 941 points just in the 70s alone. Marcel Dion comes in number three on our list. Marcel gave me the jersey that I'm wearing in this video today. He was friends with my old man back in the day. A really fun guy to be around. He was really good friends with Pierre LaRouche. And Pierre LaRouche is one of the funniest people ever. Uh, Marcel Dion, 928 points in 699 games. He played on LA's Triple Crown line. I believe that the day that the Los Angeles Kings traded for Marcel Dion from the Detroit Red Wings was also the day that the Los Angeles Lakers acquired Kareem Abdul-Jabbar from the Milwaukee Bucks. So that was a big haul that day for LA. Uh, Dion played on the Triple Crown line with Dave Taylor, who wound up going on to becoming the GM for the LA Kings, and Charlie Simmer, who married a Playboy Bunny. So things were going pretty well in LA back in the 70s. Number four on our list is Bobby Clark. Uh, he pretty much started to become the face of the NHL in the 70s with that toothless grin he had. 891 points in 773 games. He also had 906 penalty minutes. He won two Stanley Cups with the Flyers as their captain in 74 and 75. I believe uh, he had played for the Flin Flon Bombers prior to being drafted by the Flyers. And you want to hear a guy who's defensively responsible? During the 1970s alone, Bobby Clark was a plus 403. So he took care of business both ends of the ice, that is for sure. Coming up, number five, from the French Connection line, Gilbert Perrault, 869 points for the Buffalo Sabres in 753 games. Um, next up, we've got number six, Jean Rattel. He played for the New York Rangers before they made a bonehead mood, move and traded him to the Boston Bruins, where he excelled for years to come. 861 points in the 70s in 751 games to go along with a plus 231. Daryl Sittler. Uh, my first memory of Daryl Sittler is later on in his career when he played for the Flyers and they wore those Cooper All uh, pants. It was a very cool look. I kind of wish the NHL would go back to that. Uh, I wore a pair of them. They were very comfortable. They let you move around. But anyway, when I think of Daryl Sittler, that's what I think of him in the Cooper Alls in the Flyers. When he played in the 1970s for the Toronto Maple Leafs, he put up 
over a point a game. 726 games, 782 points. So he was the leader up in Toronto. Uh, Pete Mahovlich, he was Frank Mahovlich's brother. 732 points in 742 games. Also part of the Busy Boys Club, 789 penalty minutes to go along with four Stanley Cup victories during the 1970s with the Montreal Canadiens. Rick Martin, who also played on the French Connection line uh, with Gilles Perrault and Rene Robert, and he had 674 points in the 70s in 658 games for the Buffalo Sabres. And then number 10 on our list, of the 1970s NHL All-Decade Team. Uh, some of you know him as a coach or a GM, and that is Jacques Lemaire. He went on to coach the Devils, and I believe he was the Minnesota Wilds' first ever GM. He played for the Montreal Canadiens in the 70s. He only won five cups to go along with 670 points in 640 games. Uh, some other very, very notable names in the NHL in the 1970s. Gary Unger played in the St. Louis Blues, and I believe he was the first guy to establish an Ironman record. I believe he played over 700 consecutive games. Uh, Butch Goring, he was a big part of the LA Kings, and then they traded him. Uh, I believe it was Billy Harris uh, went to the LA Kings, and Butch Goring came to the New York Islanders, where he teamed up with, you know, Bossy, Trottier, Gillies, Nystrom, and they won four consecutive Stanley Cups. And then finally on my list, I wanted to put two guys, two goaltenders that were very, very prominent in the 70s in the NHL. And that's Bernie Perrant, who won the two Stanley Cups with the Flyers. And then you had Jerry Cheevers, who won two Stanley Cups with the Boston Bruins. And Cheevers, as we all know, had that awesome mask with the scars on it. And he said every time he got hit in the face with the puck, he would have had a scar. So he put the scar on his face mask instead. So that's going to do it for the 1970s NHL. NHL All-Decade Team. Let me know down in the comments section if there's somebody you think I should have had on this list. If you could, please hit your like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And as we always do here at Clearing the Benches, let them know you're out there.